Hi YouTube, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial of using ZCN on the Amstrad NC100 computer. ZCN is a version of CPM for the NC100 and NC200 computers. Using ZCN you can run all sorts of applications like VDE, Qterm, or Z machine interpreters on your NC100 computer. Now I've looked at some of my previous NC100 videos and I noticed it's really hard to see the font on the screen, just the stock firmware font. In ZCN the font's even smaller so you can fit 120 columns and 10 rows on the display. Because of this I'm going to try to zoom in and focus as well as possible so you can see everything that's going on. I hope this helps. And with that considered, let's get started. Okay, so before I show you ZCN, I'll point out a few important details for installation. One thing that you need for ZCN is a PCMCIA SRAM card, which are increasingly rare, but I happen to have one that came with an HP 95LX that I bought. This is a 1 meg PCMCIA SRAM card, which is the maximum that you can fit in a NC100. It's the maximum SRAM card capacity for this machine. So you need an SRAM card, that's one thing you need. Another thing is a serial connection to a Linux or Windows machine to move over the files to initialize the SRAM card, add ZCN, and a file called RR in it that saves over your stock firmware RAM image to the SRAM card. So you can back up all the files you might have left over while you're using your NC100 as a plain NC100 instead of a souped up wonderful CCN CPM computer. So with that I'm going to take this card and then put it back into the left side of the machine. Mine is, my card is backed up with a CR2025 battery. So who knows how long, maybe a year, I'll still have all my uh, CPM files on that card. Okay, I'll press the button up here to turn the machine on, and you should be able to see A in the upper left hand corner. This is a 1 meg card, so if I go to different drives, you can see that there's four drives, A, B, C, and D on this card. Each one is 256K, that's the largest CPM can handle, and there's four different drives formatted on this SRAM card. I can also reboot the machine, by, first by turning it off, and then pressing the yellow function key, the stop key, the upper right hand delete, they're not shown in the picture, but trust me, I am pressing those, and then the power button. You get a nice beep. If you press function X after you've installed ZCN, then you get into this ZCN command line prompt. And you can see up here, this is ZCN uh, version 1.3 from 2001. And we're in the A drive. Right now I have files just on my A and B drives. I'll show you what's there with DIR. That's one thing I can use. And on the A drive, I mainly have system files. So I have Qterm, I have MAN, something called RxFer that helps you transfer files into a stock RAM image, VDE, PM Extract, and PM Archive, which help with PMA archives, uh, bbcbass.com. And that lets you access the built in BBC Basic as if it were a CPM application. And what else do we have here? We have LS, pipe, which is for copying files, submit, opter, that helps sort out the files in a directory based on size, and then time and time set for setting the time, which seems to go real quick. Seems like seconds for the system clock go by in much shorter than a second. Um, so my time doesn't seem to be as accurate as it should be. Okay, so that's A, now I'll go to uh, B, and I have games and forth on my B directory. And I'll also point out uh, I have different utilities to see how much 
RAM is free on the SRAM card. I have this DF utility that's built into ZCN, and you can see there's very little left on the A drive, and more left on B, and even more on C. LS works just like it does in Linux. It italicizes the executables, and then with LSL, I can see how big the different files are. And here on the B drive, I have BS, which is Battleship, GoFish, Fourth, Rogue, good old Rogue, a test of VDE, some installation files for DX Fourth, and then ZCN, Invaders, Sokoban, and Tetris. I'll just show you Tetris and Rogue for the sake of time. But before I do that, let me go back to the A directory and then show you a few of the applications here. VDE and Qterm, which are good for most of your needs. I'll first show you VDE. VDE B colon VDE test dot txt. There we go. So this is just like the VD visual display editor that you might use with DOS. It's a great standard purpose editor. For help, I think it's control. Well, oh, I've, I've forgotten. Uh, forgotten help, but I can save with control K S. Uh, unchanged. Yes, I will save. Delete that. And I'll go to the end of this line and add in a new line. I am recording the video now. Control K Q to exit. Okay, so there's VDE. There's also QTerm, which is a nice general purpose terminal emulator. There's also SIR test, like serial test, that's built in to um, CPM, but QTerm is more full featured and includes an X modem or Y modem transfer utility and VT100 terminal emulation. So let me go into QTerm and then log into a Getty instance. Actually, let me check and make sure that I have the right speed, STTY 2400 for 2400 baud. Higher than that, and you get some garbled characters. Okay, I'll go to Qterm again. And then move over to my Linux box and get a Getty instance going over USB serial. Okay sudo a getty tty usb 0 2400 baud with the zcn term info entry that's provided in the zcn manual and just like that we see my ubuntu login prompt appear on the screen abraham okay great now i should set BT100 emulation, and you see that beautiful screen fetch there with all the important details about my Asus EEPC. Now there's some limitations with this. I have this set up with the ZCN term cap, which is not completely BT100 compatible. The arrow keys don't seem to work, so I am limited to using Vim, for example. Vim test 2. Fortunately, tab works. And yeah, I can look at that. Um, yeah, actually, I messed something up here. Uh, after I log in, I need to do STTY rows, uh, rows 10, columns 120. Okay, and then them uh, test. TXT or test2.txt. Okay, that's nicer. And maybe the arrow keys don't work, but fortunately I can use the standard Vim keys to go down uh, line by line and then uh, add more. So that's fortunate. You can edit files on your Linux machine through your NC100 with Vim. Standard arrow keys be darned. I'll go ahead and quit that, 
and put exit in here to shut down the Getty instance, and then control forward slash Q to get out of Qterm. So I'll stop for now just showing you some system utilities, VD and Qterm, and in a second I'll get started again and then show you just a few delightful CPM games. Okay, so now I've switched over to the B drive. One other thing I want to mention about drives, since I've mentioned the B drive. Right after you start up CPM, you need to format your RAM card with however many logical drives are supportable given that RAM size. So for me, it's one, oh, it's a one meg SRAM card, so I can do four drives, and I just do format A, format B, format C, format D, and so on. If you had 512K, it would just be A and B, and then 256K, just A. Anyway, so I've got that pointed out. For the sake of time, all I'm going to show you is uh, CPM Tris and Rogue. Okay, so CPM Tris. And it's a nice standard um, CPM clone of Tetris that's text-based. Use S to rotate and then uh, H or K and L, excuse me, to move things left and right and D to draw. And I'll just stop once I've got one line made here. Okay, and then escape, and that quits that. Okay, and there's, oh, there's CPM Tris, Invaders, and a few other things included in the, ZP, in the ZPM, the ZCN package, and that's where I got the games I put on here. You could also put Zork or other Z Machine interpreters, but you'd have to patch the COM files to handle 120 columns by 10 lines. I don't think that's standard practice for Z machine interpreters used in CPM. Those probably would expect 24 rows, 80 columns. Okay, so I'll go for rogue now. Take any key to continue. Okay, so here's rogue. Looks like it is um, standard VI keys. Ooh, one blue potion. You fight that jackal. Oh, I missed it. I defeated the jackal. Very good. I got some gold pieces. So as you can see, you get a standard text-based rogue working nicely in uh, CPM. And it's really nice to have rogue on a machine with this type of keyboard and this size screen. That's adjusted to fit the non-standard screen. Hours and hours of fun you could have with this. Okay. Stop. Okay. Okay, and now I'll quit from Rogue. I quaff my potion and had some good fun with that. So overall, I'd say this is a really nice CPM computer. There are some issues with the terminal emulation, which is a bit disappointing since one of the main 
purposes I can see for this machine is being a really nice terminal emulator. But again, all the fun you can have with CPM, you could have with the NC100. I hope this was helpful for everyone. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll have some upcoming videos where I review the HP 100 and 200 LX palm top computers and show a demo of OpenWRT on the very inexpensive, brand new RavPower FileHub Plus battery powered router. Stay tuned, those should be a lot of fun. And thank you all for watching.